Well, today has seen one of the biggest and most significant elections in decades. Hello and welcome to a new India. We are all now part of Modi's nation and it's here to stay for another eight years at least. Today marks such an enormous change that the BJP brand itself is now being subsumed under the Modi, Modi charisma. Not a single voter that I met in Uttar Pradesh said they were voting for the BJP. They were all voting for Modi, Modi, Modi. With this transformation comes, the, comes great expectations. So in our show over the next two hours, we plan to look ahead and assess how India will change under Modi. Will there be more reforms? Will there be more schemes for the poor, like the popular gas cylinder scheme, which worked tremendously well in this election and many, many others? Will India move more socialist or will it veer to the right? These are questions that will be answered obviously over the next eight years. But we'll look ahead and see, look out for any signals. So will the Modi era be revisiting the Congress or even the Indira Gandhi focus on the poor? Only perhaps implemented with tougher governance and uh, greater efficiency. I must add that in addition to Mr. Modi, there's been another huge winner in these tense elections across conflict-ridden states. We are, we, uh, all of us, I think, pay our deepest respect and admiration to the Election Commission. The organization and conduct of these elections has been absolutely outstanding. Hardly a step wrong. The Election Commission, the Election Commissioner, you make us proud. Thank you very much. So let's have a look at what these elections were all about. First of all, they frankly were a replica of the 2014 Modi wave. Just have a look at the, the, the figures. Let's have a look at the graphics on that. The 2014 Modi wave, which nobody thought could be replicated. Here it is. 2014, the BJP and its allies got 43% of the vote. And now, 2017, 42% of the vote. Almost identical. Uh, moving on, in fact, the other parties as well. The SP plus Congress, 30% in 2014, 29% this time. And the BSP, 20% 20 in 2014, 22% is it this time? 23% this time, 22.6% this time. It's almost identical, a replica. Nobody thought that the Modi wave of 2014 would be repeated nearly three years, two and a half years into his government. In fact, if we look at another set of figures, you could argue that Modi has done even better this time than in 2014. Remember, the actual number of seats in 2014 were 337, but the Congress and the Samajwadi Party were split then. If you added them together, the BJP plus would have come down to 310, and now they've got 324. So they've done better than 2014 by another 14 seats. A remarkable, remarkable change. And if we look at what it means in terms of uh, caste, has it cut across caste divides? Is it the end of caste politics? Look at the BJP votes. It's almost the same in all different types of constituencies. These are high scheduled caste voter constituencies. BJP got 84% of the vote. Uh, won 84% of those seats. That's their strike rate. In OBCs, 78%, pretty close. In the general caste, 86%. So 84, 78, 86. Uh, only in the Yadavs did they go down a bit. At the Jats, they were 90%. Of course, that was a tense area. And the Yadavs, they were 65. But look at the bulk of it, 84, 78, 86. Not much uh, deviation. So is it the end of the caste-based caste, caste -based elections? We just looked at how each party, how the BJP is done across different castes. Scheduled caste got 41% of the vote. OBC seats, 42% of the vote. General caste, 44. Not major differences. Jats, 45. Only Yadavs. Even they're not that bad, 38%. That's how uniform, and that's unusual for Uttar Pradesh. And even, fa in fact, if you look at the Samajwadi party, it's similar. 26, 28, 24, 22, and 32, of course, in the Yadavs. But pretty homogeneous. 
Where is caste in all the BSP 25, 23, 21, 21, 22? Not major caste differences in this elections. We've got Uma Bharati now joining us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining us. Do you? It's wonderful to have you. Another one. You are one of the charismatic speakers and uh, uh, mass leaders in this election. Did you feel, or is this an exaggeration, that caste has become less important now, even in Uttar Pradesh? आपने सबसे पहले तो शुरुआत बड़ी अच्छी की कि आपने इलेक्शन कमीशन को धन्यवाद दिया उसका अभिनंदन किया क्योंकि हम कई बार बच्चे अपने माता पिता को भूल जाते हैं जिनकी वजह से हम अच्छी पढ़ाई करते हैं और अच्छे रिमार्क मिलते हैं एक वन मोर थिंग भी इलेक्शन कमीशन को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद दूंगी वन मोर थिंग उमा भारती जी वन मोर थिंग आई शुड हैव स्टार्टेड विथ नाउ टू कंग्रेचुलेट यू ऑन अ ह्यूज विक्ट्री मेनी मेनी कंग्रेचुलेशन थैंक यू मेरी अपनी कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसी में वाकई मेरी जो असेंबली सेगमेंट है वो बहुत ज्यादा वोटों से जीते हैं लेकिन आपने एक जो दूसरी बात कही पहले मैं इलेक्शन कमीशन का बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करती हूँ इतनी शांति के साथ उत्तर प्रदेश में चुनाव हो गया जो अनएक्सपेक्टेड था दूसरी बात आपने जो कही कि क्या कास्ट पॉलिटिक्स खत्म हो गई ये सही बात है कि इसके साथ एक पॉलिटिक्स और खत्म हुई वो है क्लास पॉलिटिक्स क्योंकि इस देश में एक पॉलिटिकल ऐसी क्लास शुरू हुई थी जो बहुत कम बाहर निकलते थे अचानक भगवान के अवतार की तरह प्रकट होते थे और वो ये मान के चलते थे कि हम रिमोट कंट्रोल से चीजों को चला सकते हैं जिसमें खुद अखिलेश ने भी वो भूल की कि उन्होंने अपने पिता को ग्रांटेड लिया क्योंकि उनके पिता तो जमीनी राजनीति करने वाले व्यक्ति रहे हैं राहुल को भी ये भ्रम रहा कि नेहरू गांधी का टैग लगा होने से ही वो मोदी का मजाक बना सकते हैं इसलिए अब की बार आप बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं कास्ट और क्लास दोनों की पॉलिटिक्स को डिफीट हो गया है और अब जरूरतमंदों की राजनीति शुरू होगी हमें लोगों की जरूरतें पूरी करनी पड़ेगी लोगों के एक्सपेक्टेशंस पे खरा उतरना पड़ेगा जी हाँ एक्सपेक्टेशंस आर वेरी हाई नाउ एंड लॉट ऑफ प्रेशर ऑन यू लुकिंग अड एंड यू वन एन इलेक्शन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ विकास एंड यू ऑल्सो सेट सब का साथ इन इन Bihar, it was a slightly more divisive election. This time, it came once or twice during the election. Looking ahead in the future, under uh, the new Modi era, is the BJP in, now in a much more comfortable position? Of course, is the BJP going to be less divisive or more divisive? अभी जो मेरा अनुभव रहा है मोदी जी के साथ पौने तीन साल काम करने का और जो गवर्नेंस में मैंने नई चीज़ों की डिस्कवरी की है क्योंकि मैं अटल जी के साथ मिनिस्टर थी कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर थी अटल जी के साथ में 2003 तक जब तक मैं चीफ मिनिस्टर नहीं बन गई थी उसमें और उसमें अभी अभी एक अंतर आ गया है और उस अंतर का मुकाबला करना बहुत मुश्किल हो रहा था जो कि मुझे लग रहा है कि मोदी जी ने उसका मुकाबला किया है अब वो ये है कि हमारे देश में एक अजीब किस्म की गैप आई है अमीर और गरीब के बीच में रोटी और उसकी जरूरत तो पूरी हुई है लेकिन जो बेसिक फैसिलिटीज हैं लाइफ की वो कम हुई है हमें इसी पर फोकस करना पड़ेगा जिसमें हेल्थ है एजुकेशन है लॉ एंड ऑर्डर है इसी पर फोकस करके चलना पड़ेगा और उत्तर प्रदेश का, का तो बहुत बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन था इन चीजों को खराब कर देने में जी हाँ वन ऑफ दिग डिफरेंस एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इन दिस इलेक्शन इज the perception that you are tackling corruption the biggest scourge of india's economy corruption eco uh, demonetization was the first step it may or may not work but it was seen as a genuine attempt to try and stop corruption so but in these elections there was more black money used than any other election so are we going to genuinely see more steps after demonetization to stop corruption There are tougher steps to take. इसकी पहली शुरुआत होती है खुद से हमारे पौने तीन साल हो गए लेकिन मोदी के किसी भी मिनिस्टर के ऊपर करप्शन का चार्ज नहीं लगा जो चार्जेस लगे वो इतने सुपरफिशियल थे कि उनको अपोजिशन साबित नहीं कर सका इसलिए जब हमने सबसे पहले खुद से शुरुआत की है हमने एक डिपार्टमेंट को अपने काम को ठीक तरीके से चलाने की शुरुआत की डिमोनोटाइजेशन जो हुआ है 
उसका इम्पैक्ट धीरे धीरे होना है और बहुत बड़ा होना है पहला इम्पैक्ट था कि लोग बहुत खुश हुए लोगों को लगा कि बहुत बड़ा चेंज आ गया यह है कि लोगों को ऐसा लगा अब जो अगली चीज है वो ये है कि ये चीज जब ब्लैक मनी को खत्म करती है तो ये चीज करप्शन को फिर कैसे खत्म करती है इस पर अगला हमला होगा जो कि मोदी जी ने कहा भी है कि अब हम बेनामी संपत्तियों के ऊपर हमला करेंगे और भी जो अन्य तरीके हैं ब्लैक मनी के हम उन पर भी हमला करेंगे सबसे बड़ी चीज यह है कि उनको एक मास एडोरेशन मिला है पूरे देश का एडोरेशन मिला है इस कदम को उठाने में तो आगे भी अब वो निश्चित रूप से कदम उठाएंगे और उसमें उत्तर प्रदेश तो करप्शन के बिल्कुल पीक पर बैठा हुआ था और इसलिए उत्तर प्रदेश के लोगों के एक्सपेक्टेशन यही हैं कि हम क्राइम को वहां खत्म कर देंगे करप्शन को खत्म कर देंगे और हम देश से भी उसको खत्म कर देंगे राइट उमा भारती जी वॉट वर इज यू टूडे यू आर इट नाउ एवरीबडी सेज टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इलेक्शन इज हंड्रेड परसेंट इन द पॉकेट ऑफकोर्स दे सेड अबाउट वाजपेयी इट वुड बी हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड वॉज द बिगेस्ट सरप्राइज दैट ही लॉस्ट सो वॉट वर इज यू ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस टू मच एक्सपेक्टेशन Uh, any what are your worries in this great day for you some niggling worries you may have mujhe agar aap kahe to ek vyaktigat taur par chinta ye lag rahi hai ki 3 saal hone ko aa gaye hain lagbhag hamari sarkar ko aur bahut sare karanon se ganga ki scheme banane ke baad mein bhi uska jo implementation ka size hai wo bahut weak raha hai aur mujhe uttarakhand ki sarkar jo harish rawat ki thi nitish ji ki thi और झारखंड में रघुबर दास की बंगाल में ममता की उनसे दिक्कत नहीं आती थी मुझे यूपी में दिक्कत आती थी काम करने में हम शुरू भी नहीं कर सके थे मुझे चिंता है कि जो लॉस हमें हो गया हेलो कट गया जो लॉस हमें हो गया दो साल का उसकी हम रिकवरी कर सकें एक चिंता तो मेरी ये है दूसरा ये है कि हमें हमने जो इस तीन साल में मैंने जो देखा है कि भारत की राजनीति में और गवर्नेंस में जो परिवर्तन आया प्राइवेट सेक्टर जिस प्रकार से एंटर किया सब क्षेत्रों पे अपना कब्जा किया उसके बाद में करप्शन का मुंह भी बहुत बड़ा हो गया वो सिस्टम में जगह जगह पे अलग अलग तरीकों से एंटर कर गए हैं इन सारी चीजों पर कंट्रोल करना मोदी जी के लिए बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज रहा है जिसका उन्होंने सामना किया है और आगे भी वो इसका सामना कर सकें क्योंकि जब हम डेवलपमेंट की ओर बढ़ेंगे हेलो तो हम हम पीपीपी मोड की ओर भी बढ़ेंगे प्राइवेट पब्लिक पार्टिसिपेशन के बोर्ड की ओर बढ़ेंगे क्योंकि डेवलपमेंट अकेले गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर से पूरा नहीं हो सकता जब हम उस ओर बढ़ेंगे तो हम उसमें घुसे हुए करप्शन का जो हमें सामना करना जो डेवलपमेंट में घुसा हुआ करप्शन है वो एक दूसरा बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है मुझे लगता है कि गंगा का चैलेंज शायद मैं उसका मुकाबला कर लू अब और मोदी जी के सामने जो बड़ा चैलेंज है कि देश को पूरी तरह से परिवर्तन करना है अमीर और गरीब के गैप को मिटाना है और डेवलपमेंट में प्राइवेट पार्टिसिपेशन पब्लिक पार्टिसिपेशन से जो करप्शन की एंट्री नए तरीके से हुई है उसका भी एक बहुत बड़ा मुकाबला है जो आने वाले समय में होगा और मोदी right. जी जरूर कर लेंगे दो हजार उन्नीस की चिंता बिल्कुल नहीं लग रही है डॉक्टर राय <laughs> हम जीतेंगे <laughs> No, even uh, Vajpayee was going to win, so there are always surprises. The Indian electorate is full of surprises. But I had asked you earlier, with so much uh, success, are you going to be more divisive or less divisive? And you're talking about uh, progress, Vikas, but in the middle of that, are you going to drop a divisive factor, which is the building of the temple? Is that going to be put on the back burner now? Are you going to focus on just development? What about the temple? आपने बहुत आपने बहुत सुंदर बात कही है मैंने इसलिए बात मैं आपको ये बात बताना चाहती हूं कि मंदिर उत्तर प्रदेश में है राम मंदिर जहां मतलब राम मंदिर का जो विवाद है उसकी जमीन उत्तर प्रदेश में है लेकिन इसका जो सेंटीमेंट है वो नेशनल है और इसका जो इम्पैक्ट इम्पैक्ट है वो यूनिवर्सल है हम अयोध्या पे क्या फैसला लेते हैं इसका असर पूरे देश के सेंटीमेंट पर पड़ता है और हम अयोध्या पे क्या फैसला लेते हैं इसका इम्पैक्ट पूरी दुनिया पे भारत की इमेज के बारे में पड़ता है इसलिए हम उत्तर प्रदेश को हमने खुद मैंने कभी भी उत्तर प्रदेश के चुनाव से और अयोध्या को जोड़ के कभी नहीं देखा अयोध्या को मैंने यूनिवर्सल इम्पैक्ट से जोड़ के देखा और भारत के सेंटिमेंट के साथ में जोड़ करके देखा अब बात आई है कि ये आगे कैसे होगा और क्या होगा आप अच्छी तरह से जानते हो तीन जजेस की जो बेंच थी उनने खुद बता दिया कि जहां रामलला बैठे थे वो राम जन्मभूमि है हमारी पूरी लड़ाई इसी के लिए थी कि हमें कहा जाता था कि वो राम जन्मभूमि नहीं है और हम इसके लिए जान देने मैं खुद वहां गोली खाने के लिए तैयार थी इस बात के लिए कि ये राम जन्मभूमि है वो चीज खत्म हो गई उस पर स्टैंप लग गया कोर्ट का भी लग गया कि वो राम जन्मभूमि है वहां रामलला जहां बैठे हैं वो जगह रामलला की है अब बात यह है कि जमीन किसकी है 
आज के आज जो जमीन दर्ज है वो किसके नाम दर्ज है रियल ओनरशिप किसकी है तो इट इज ए डिस्प्यूट ऑफ लैंड नाउ तो ये तो इतने प्रेम से सॉर्ट आउट हो सकता है कोर्ट के बाहर भी क्योंकि डिस्प्यूट ऑफ लैंड है और कोर्ट के अंदर भी सोमनाथ के तर्ज पे भी हो सकता है सो यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू फाइट एनी मोर यू आर गोइंग टू ट्राई एंड गेट इट बाई प्रेम इफ एट ऑल अदरवाइज यू आर नॉट फाइटिंग अबाउट इट एनी We don't need to fight because we won the battle. You won the battle in terms of identification, but it still defies. One last thing, I, I think I'll ask others yes. to ask you questions also. We, are, you are, and uh, there are great expectations on you to clean up the Ganga. And uh, there was uh, during the campaign a lot of uh, reasons were given that the Akhilesh government was not uh, being cooperative. Now you have your own government. Will you clean the Ganga up in the next two three years? आपने बिल्कुल सही बात मुझसे पूछी है यही बात मैंने आपको कहा भी कि मुझे चिंता यही है कि प्रधानमंत्री जी की तरफ से मुझे पूरी तरह से सपोर्ट रहा पीएमओ का सपोर्ट रहा सारे मंत्रियों का सपोर्ट रहा और एक उत्तर प्रदेश को छोड़कर बाकी राज्यों का भी नॉन कोऑपरेशन नहीं रहा इसी एक राज्य ने प्रॉब्लम खड़ी की और इसी राज्य में गंगा मैली हुई है कानपुर जैसी जगहों पर सबसे ज्यादा मैली हुई है इसलिए मेरे लिए आपने जब पूछा ना आपके लिए चिंता क्या है तो आई एम रियली कंसर्न एंड आई एम रियली यू नो थिंकिंग अबाउट इट कि वुड आई बी एबल टू डू इट और ये चीज मुझे इतनी ज्यादा चिंता में डाले हुए है कि आप समझ गए ना मेरी मेरी जान मेरी जिंदगी इसी पर टिकी हुई है कि मैं गंगा को और उसमें से एक डॉक्टर रॉय भी है जिनको मैं दिखाना चाहती हूँ कि मैं गंगा को निर्मल कर सकी आई थिंक द होल कंट्री इज मोर बिहाइंड यू ऑन दिस फैक्टर द गंगा क्लीनिंग अप देन ऑन एनी अदर फैक्टर दैट इज एन ऑल इंडिया इश्यू बिकॉज इट इज इन अ टेरिबल स्टेट एंड इट्स सच एन इम्पोर्टेंट रिवर दैट इफेक्ट Uh, more than 200 million people so we wish you the best of luck in cleaning that up can i okay, yeah can yes I yes ask a question yeah. thank uh, you uma ji main shekhar gupta bol raha hu aapko bahut bahut badhai aur aap se ek sawal aap bundelkhand ko bahut acha janti hain aur wo bahut up agar pichhda hua hai to bundelkhand aur bhi pichhda hua hai aur kuch zile uske madhya pradesh mein bhi hain to aap sochte hain ki ab samay aa gaya hai कि यूपी के फिर छोटी स्टेट्स बनाने की जरूरत है जैसे उत्तराखंड बनाया गया ऐसे बुंदेलखंड या वेस्टर्न यूपी का जो हरित प्रदेश बोलते हैं पूर्वांचल इसके तीन या चार राज्य बनाए जाए क्योंकि इतने बड़े राज्य को मैनेज कर पाना बहुत मुश्किल है अगर आप मुख्यमंत्री हो तो अलग बात है लेकिन किसी और के लिए संभालना तो बहुत मुश्किल है पहले का मैं उत्तर दे दू की आप मान लीजिए कि मैं गंगा के अलावा कुछ नहीं सोचती हूँ दूसरी बात आपने बुंदेलखंड की कही हमने ऑलरेडी अपने मैनिफेस्टो में ये बात कही है कि हम बुंदेलखंड विकास बोर्ड बनाएंगे भाजपा छोटे राज्यों की हमेशा पक्षधर रही है कल के दिन छोटे राज्यों के गठन के लिए जब पुनर्गठन आयोग बनेगा तो उसमें बुंदेलखंड को भी विचाराधीन होना ही है कभी ना कभी तो बुंदेलखंड को एक अलग राज्य बनना ही है लेकिन उसके पहले हम उसके लिए हम बुंदेलखंड के डेवलपमेंट के लिए इसका वेट नहीं करेंगे कि अलग राज्य बन जाए बिना अलग राज्य बनाए भी बुंदेलखंड विकास बोर्ड के जरिए और बुंदेलखंड पैकेज के जरिए हम उसका समाधान निकाल सकेंगे लेकिन मैं आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा है भारत के सबसे पिछड़े इलाकों में गरीब इलाकों में एक बुंदेलखंड है उसके दस लाख मजदूर तो अकेले दिल्ली में मजदूरी केन बेतवा रिवर लिंकिंग शुरू होने वाली है मैं आपको एक खुशखबरी सुना रही हूँ ये श्रीनिवास जो वहाँ की गरीबी को दूर करेगा जी उमा जी श्रीनिवासन जैन आपको भी Uh, मैं भी बधाई देना चाहता हूं। आपसे एक सवाल ये पूछना था कि आपने बहुत करीबी से अटल अडवाणी भाजपा को देखी है और अब आप नरेंद्र मोदी अमित शाह भाजपा को भी बहुत करीबी से देख रही हैं क्या फ़र्क सबसे बड़ा आप इन दोनों भाजपा में देख रही हैं जो बदलाव आया है पार्टी में ये जो फ़र्क है ना इसका कंपेरिजन नहीं हो पाएगा क्योंकि अटल जी और अडवाणी जी के समय के चैलेंजेस अलग थे और अभी के समय के चैलेंज अलग हैं उस समय का चैलेंज था कि कांग्रेस एक बहुत मजबूत पार्टी थी और भारत के एक बहुत बड़े हिस्से पर अपोजिशन में भी जो कांग्रेस को अपोज करते थे उसमें समाजवादियों का और साम्यवादियों का कब्जा हो जाता था ये पहली बार ऐसा हुआ है जब हम देश की सबसे बड़ी पार्टी हो गए और हमारे सामने जो अपोज करने वाले लोग हैं वो अलग अलग हैं तितर बितर हैं और बिखरे हुए हैं और लेकिन वो जिस प्रकार से हम पे हमले बोलते हैं जैसे अभी की घटना हुई रामजस कॉलेज की हुई जे की हुई मतलब हमारी इमेज खराब करने की कोशिश करते हैं हमारे वोट का नुकसान नहीं कर पाते हैं इसलिए अभी अब अब की बार के चैलेंजेस भी बिल्कुल अलग हैं और इन सारे चैलेंजेस को पार करके वोटर तक अपना हाथ बढ़ा देना और उसका हाथ पकड़ लेना ये कुशलता अमित शाह में है 
और मोदी जी ने तो जिस प्रकार से राइज किया है वो जहां से उठे हैं जब वो गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री बनाए गए एनडीटीवी इसका गवाह रहा और गुजरात को बेस्ट स्टेट का अवार्ड भी मिलते रहे आप उसके विटनेस रहे हो कितनी खराब स्थिति में था अर्थ के कारण गुजरात मोदी वहां पहुंचे और उसको रिकवर करके ले आए आज देश भी अर्थ जैसी स्थिति में ही था दस साल क्योंकि रिमोट कंट्रोल से एक सरकार चली थी मनमोहन सिंह जी की और उसके परिणाम स्वरूप दस साल में जो कुछ इस प्रदेश ने भुगता और उत्तर प्रदेश ने सपा और बसपा के रूल में भुगता ये लगभग अर्थ को एक जैसी ही गिरे हुए देश की और गिरे हुए राज्य की स्थिति थी तो इसलिए ये चैलेंज डिफरेंट है अटल जी और अडवान जी के चैलेंज डिफरेंट थे हमारे चैलेंज डिफरेंट है वेरी क्लेवर मत करिए मोदी तो यूनिक पर्सनैलिटी है उमा भारती जी दस वेरी क्लेवर आंसर ब्रिलियंट आंसर एंड एंड वंस अगेन कंग्रेचुलेशन and you leave us with a big smile to show how happy you are today <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much thank you, thank you very much congratulations so it is still um open whether how much they're going to fight for the ram mandir right well i think they all have toned it down toned i think they down. now realize they don't need it to win right. I think the day they needed to it, win, probably it'll come up again on the. It was agenda. in the UP manifesto, which was somewhat surprising. But nobody's pushed it. But they haven't. But they said but it's but within but the constitutional but ambit. But Basu, it has always been in the manifesto. There's been no BJP manifesto which has not had Ram Mandir, but with the caveat that either. Through okay. consensus, it will be okay. or right. through a but, court but, order. But Pranay, but, okay. I would like to make a prediction today. I think by 2019. there will be a ram mandir that at least the construction will start at that site because i think the bjp is seriously going to work maybe not publicly but certainly back channels to try and resolve okay, that okay we got arun jaitley joining us uh, thank you very much uh, arun jaitley for joining us i know that your time now is uh, it's it's a great night and many many congratulations to you um, uh, uh, amazing victory It's just that we want to look ahead a bit, and all the pressures and expectations on you. Two and a half years, people say, "Okay, give them another chance; they will implement." But now, implementation has to start. And in the implementation, what's the philosophy going to be? A kind of more efficient Congress, UPA, pro poor, garibi hatao kind of, uh, like the gas cylinders, which were so effective. Or is it going to be a reformist kind of liberal regime? or a combination of both well i think that's the mistake uh, pranoy that people get into they feel that there is a conflict between the two and therefore you must choose one of the two true from day one this government has not accepted that for instance if you look at economic reforms which had come to a standstill during the previous 10 years anyone including our critics would have to concede that this was a reformist government we took decision one after the other at quick intervals we were not scared of taking a decision and all our decisions in terms of economic reform liberalization were moving in one direction now notwithstanding a global slowdown we did try to expedite growth revenues have increased and we have tried to spend a large part of the resource of the government both in physical and social infrastructure now that expenditure in social infrastructure our emphasis of policy in that direction certainly was a pro poor exercise it was consciously slow but there is no contradiction in that and continuing with the reforms i think the mistake that the upa did from 2004 to 2014 was that they concentrated on redistribution of existing resources rather than reforms and redistribution right you know like they you used to say everybody used to say there's no congress without the gandhis is there no bjp without mr modi now for the next 10 years well i think uh, he's a great asset as far as the party is concerned in terms of leadership he's provided direction he's provided clarity he's provided leadership but the bjp unlike the congress is a structured political party we have a structure in every state we have a cadre and therefore this cadre makes us a cadre based party but we are a cadre based mass party now under mr modi we were a cadre based mass party even under mr vajpay and therefore as the generations move on you see you won't have 
another modi of the next generation take over somebody else will take over it was mr vajpay earlier it's mr modi now and tomorrow it's going to be somebody else it won't be a descendant of the same family that's the distinction between us and the uh, congress I, I, just the bjp is a structured political party the congress is a crowd around a family we must not uh, overlook that distinction although i must say the similarities are increasing every day i heard a lot of uh, bjp leaders saying the high command will decide words that uh, you must have heard many times in the past from the congress but just one uh, looking ahead we're just trying to understand what the direction is going to be of this government if you were in a crisis you had lost this election people say most polit and not just the bjp any party in a crisis looks for diversions a war a surgical strike a crisis within the country divide now you're in a very comfortable position you are heading towards most people i think the bookies would give you a 95% chance of winning the 2019 election but bookies of course we know what they did in uh, brexit but anyway you're in a comfortable position is there going to be less need for diversions or are you going to be tougher and you're going to be more confident what is the tone of how is the tone of the government going to change after these elections you see in the last 3 years we won most major elections we lost two of them we lost delhi we lost bihar but then uh, the 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 direction of the government was fairly neutral uh, 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 in terms of direction it wasn't impacted by the defeat in bihar itself it's not going to be uh, greatly impacted by the huge victory in uttar pradesh i think the government will be emboldened the government will be stronger and we'll continue to perform the way we've been performing yeah mr jetley this dorab uh, i wanted to ask you about the economic policy that you spoke of if you go back to the vajpay government there was a lot of disinvestment here there's virtually none there was actually the same time also you talked about private you know something to do with the banks the twin balance sheet problem that mr subramaniam keeps on talking of economic survey after economic survey what are your plans in those directions that you know why should eternally loss making companies be you know be saddled on the taxpayer uh, dorab let me correct you on your facts as far as your first question is concerned during the five years of mr vajpayee's government from 99 to 2004 the total amount divested by the government was 27000 crores this financial year itself i have divested 45000 crores the stock market Except has changed that we do it more tactically we 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 do it more tactically we don't step on everybody's toes and we blend it with competent politics so that we don't lose huge amount of votes secondly as far as strategic disinvestment is concerned hotels were easier to disinvest we are going ahead with disinvesting some of them the niti aayog has now prepared a list of those companies which could be completely privatized itself and that's also on the agenda of this government so please don't be under an impression there is no divestment this current year there has been more divestment this year than there was during 5 years of mr vajpayee's government and there as far as the twin balance sheet problem is concerned there have been a series of steps which we have taken in the last few years in order to resolve it we've offered sector wise solution to areas like steel which were one of the principal contributors to the uh, the twin balance sheet problem as far as the infrastructure sector is concerned we've taken some radical decisions like paying the contractors whose payments are held up pending arbitration awards pending before courts some movement towards resolution has been going on part of the big problem is this 20 big accounts which require for resolution in at least two to three cases there are transfers of management of certain companies which are taking place the insolvency and the bankruptcy code was enacted really for that purpose i yesterday had a meeting with the detailed meeting with the rbi itself to take the next major step which we are going to announce in the next few days in order to address that very problem so don't be under this mis uh, impression that either on disinvestment or on the resolution of the bank loans nothing is being done no privatization of banks that's what i was asking you really. privatization of banks uh, was never on the agenda of the nda i have only announced only in one case as far as privatization is concerned 
that's a matter under consideration which is idbi we said we'll bring it down below 50% in the case of the other public sector banks we've announced consolidation and we've announced the first major consolidation which has already taken effect this year that is the spi being merged with all its subsidies we are next looking at the bharatiya mahila bank being merged with it so slowly as the health of the banks improves you'll probably hear more on this count it's just a question of ideology that you may be disinvesting but you don't believe in privatization you are you believe in efficient public sector it's a big difference because it tells you the path to the future uh, and in, in terms of now that you have this comfortable victory one of the thing factors that is affect india's image in fact right up to recently yesterday day before is uh, this government's tough stand on ngos on green peace on many international organizations that seem to come from a lack of uh, an uncertainty with the government now that you're certain that you're you've got a solid foundation are you going to take it a little easier and improve our image in the global sphere that we are a much more liberal country prano <laughs> let me let me correct you on both these counts once again Right. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I have to disagree both with both of you on more than one count. As far no, no. as privatization to correct Dora, is concerned, to correct Dora on facts told, is a huge achievement. I, <laughs> on privatization, as I've already told you, it's very much on the agenda of this government. The list of the first set of companies to be privatized has already been prepared by the Niti Aayog. Work is in progress. Now, as far as the NGOs are concerned, certainly we do appreciate that the civil society organisations in any democracy will function in the world. But civil society organisations are also bound by certain rules of transparency. If the domestic laws of India require the filing of certain some returns with the government, as far as their own donations are concerned, I don't think it is a prudent practice for any NGO. which expects very high standards from the rest of the system in the government to say that we won't abide by them if you have a large number of ngos which are not complying with the government regulations certainly the government can take appropriate action under the law but haven't you don't you agree that you uh, there has been global criticism of your handling of you know greenpeace and other organizations that are functioning fine in other countries but in india they are suddenly under attack I, I, it it is important for india's image as a liberal democracy and uh, you you're aware that that well we, i i had I, let yeah, go me, ahead, let go me ahead. tell you we had we had criticism for taking action against one of them not greenpeace another one yes. and finally when their heads came and met me and we pointed out that they had been strongly supporting political activity against the government by certain interested groups Uh, they wanted to introspect themselves as to where they had landed themselves in because there is a lot of accountability which is required by those sections also it is not that this government is not criticized notwithstanding our performance we've been criticized more than any other government in the past right i want to get back onto a positive uh, future look as a result of these uh, ama the amazing election uh, victory that you had today it is uh, it, I can't remember such a significant election in the last three or four decades. What, what? How will that change you and your government, the finance ministry and your government? This, this victory and this, this success. <coughs> I, I think uh, it changes us. It change. It strengthens us because if you are decisive and you are confident about the merit of your decision. go ahead and implement it without fear of consequences the people will support a decision which is in much larger national interest i think uh, this election result has sent this one message clearly back home secondly i think the up campaign has taught me as a political worker another lesson propaganda is no substitute for performance merely because akhilesh yadav invented a nice attractive slogan that doesn't mean that people forgot what was happening and not happening over the last 4 years but they also a lot of people did feel that a lot of promises have been made not yet implemented but give mr modi a chance so you are your the spotlight is also on this government for implementation now don't you think 
I think rightly so, because after all, if you are in government in power at the center and in most states, people have a right to expect a certain level of performance from you. Right. And therefore, expecting that level of performance from you is something which is quite uh, natural as far as the people are concerned. The right. responsibility on us with effect from today increases a lot more. Right. I was going to ask you who's going to be the next chief minister, but I can see that will be a pointless question, right? Any chance? <laughs> Breaking news? Well, I think uh, it's, it, it's too early for me today to make a comment on this. We are, our parliamentary board is meeting tomorrow. You'll probably get uh, indications then onwards. Right. I know you, you know it, but you're not letting on. You know the media too well to uh, give us a headline ever. Shocking. But, <laughs> Mr. Jaitley, thank you very much for joining us and uh, for all those uh, thank you. comments. Thank you. And many, many congratulations once again. A huge thank victory. You. Huge victory. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the key, Shekhar. Is this government going to be more relaxed and they don't need to be divisive, they don't need a surgical strike, they don't need a war, they don't need to uh, you know, raise tensions in the country to divert or are they going to now be more arrogant and more confident and therefore uh, be first tougher? Of all, uh, first of all, uh, something like surgical strike. They will look at it very differently from how you describe it. Right. They will not look at it as something that diverts attention. They will look at it as a statement by a strong government to the neighbors. Right. That it's the old story of two eyes for an eye, the whole job yeah. for it. But it does help in your... It, it does, but, but they... In fact, many people said that a surgical strike, ke baad, things were going so well, now demonetization, kar liya, yes. ruined but, all... But, but, that, swept but you that is the style of the government. Right. So the government will not sort not get into a different cr kind of cruise control right. now and forget all that. You will have events in this government. That's Mr. Modi's style. Mr. Modi will create headlines uh, at intervals and he will he will control them. He will decide right. what headlines he wants. Right. Uh, I, think, I, I think Narendra Modi uh, believes in disturbing the status quo. But he you does know? that probably and when you, you need it. At the moment, he doesn't need it. He wants the status quo. This is he's just doing brilliantly. Why change it? No, I that's think what that, I'm asking. No, Chandra. I think that's his style, as Sheikh yeah. has said. Mm -hmm. He that's believes it. in it, yeah. and and yeah. it and it keeps him, you know, keeps everybody he, on their toes. He, he <laughs> keeps everybody no, on, and it keeps him in keeps, the public mind. He also, mind, keeps, he also you know? keeps disrupting himself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the monetization was a huge this disruption. Reminds me of uh, a theory that Mao Zedong used to believe in: permanent disequilibrium. Permanent disequilibrium was Mao's way, and he did it throughout his uh, tenure. That after every few years, there would be something which was unexpected, which was kind of shocking, which would upset the cadre, upset the leadership, and uh, destabilize the established order and those who were, you know, entrenched. I think there's something similar in Mr. Modi's style. And again, I agree with Shekhar that uh, now, as far as surgical strikes are concerned. Look, there will be an expectation from now, after this kind of majority that is got in the UP, plus a strong majority in Parliament, Rajya Sabha, they will have a majority soon, that now you are going to give a firm rejoinder to Pakistan every time there is a major terrorist See, incursion. This is the point. So his answer is that this confidence and success will make you even go, become even more aggressive. Every time you say, this is what the country expects of us. And we have the power to do it. Yeah, there will be an expectation and he has to fulfill it also. This is not his style, it's a method. Right, right. It's a method. Yeah, uh, but I mean it does have repercussions on the country. Well, uh, I, I think he's a risk, risk taker. That that comes yeah. with, the, uh, right. with the man now. Okay, now let's move the focus <laughs> of this um, BJP onto the most honest politicians we've uh, come across in a long time and intelligent. <laughs> Two of the worst things one could ever call a politician. <laughs> Where does the Congress go from here? It's in a deep crisis, won't you admit? Deep, deep crisis. Its, exi its existence is at stake. Uh, I completely accept that I think uh, you know, what that word is called existential crisis. You yeah. know, I think it's quite clearly that. Yeah. Uh, and the sad part for me is that actually there is a great opportunity and I am not too worried that we keep winning elections but I think it is a great chance to uh, you know put yourself back as the preeminent second party uh, you know especially after this election but 
Uh, as we spoke in the morning, uh, I think my problem is, uh, are we really having the teeth to do the few two or three things that we really require to, to get going in today's politics? I think one of them is uh, very clearly that given the fact that we have a leader of this kind in the opposition, we have a government that will do the kind of things I think that both Chandanji and Mr. Shekhar Gupta said. I think the part that Mr. Jaitley spoke is, is the more mundane government kind of stuff, you know, you'll keep happening. I don't think that worries any government Nothing because... Mr. Jaitley ever says it's mundane. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, but you know, this is the kind of talk I heard even between 2003, 2002, 2004. So I think if you need to be, be a party that can take on the challenge of the leader you are confronted with, uh, with the kind of uh, population, the kind of communication and the kind of flux that happening in society, uh, you also need to become a party that actually responds to that on a real time, on an on time basis. You cannot have hierarchical structures ending up on both sides with people who are perhaps not equipped to take decisions in the manner and the spirit in which that thing requires. Do you think for a major change and for survival of the Congress, Rahul Gandhi has to step down? Uh, I would believe that a large part of our leadership that's been in control of our party for a long time and he needs to think that they their style has to retire. If they believe they have to retire, that's their decide. I the think their style, style has, retire. has to retire. The style, is, the has the to style, retire, the style has to retire. You cannot have an AICC that believes controlling parties are more important. You, don't, you cannot have leadership that believes they represent the high command. You have to have people who believe represent the people. That's and a very you, important And you know, while we always say that part, uh, people are our high command, and can we you actually have, respect those can who you, can, that can you afford working committee members who on a day when you have one victory in Punjab, make a public statement that Amrinder Singh has very little to do with it? No, you cannot. No. Right. Uh, let me, uh, Shekharji, say something. Just one precisely second. Go, precisely uh, what just happened a, today. just been joined by Ravi Shankar Prashad. We'll just uh, ask him a few questions and then get back to this because I think it's a very important uh, existential question for the Congress. Once again, many, many congratulations. And we can have a big smile for that. Thank you, Mr. Dor. Thank you. <laughs> a absolutely amazing performance. We have just done a short analysis before you came to show that the uh, BJP has in fact performed better in Uttar Pradesh than they did in 2014. You improved if you club the uh, Congress and uh, SP seats to, uh, votes together, you've got more seats now than you would have got in 2014. Uh, that, that's a huge achievement. But with all this success, how is the BJP going to change? Well, first of all, let me tell you that this success has come even after two and a half years of the Prime Minister of Sri Narendra Modi. That is no mean achievement. You are also an eminent cephalologist, Mr. Roy, and you know that there is an element after half, half term, the whole mood of the country changes. On the, contra on the contrary, there is a greater affirmation in the leadership and performance. Now, how we are going to change? I am not able to understand this question, but I just overheard your uh, lament about Congress party. You will continue with that. But let me use a very hilarious component of that discussion. Right. In the campaign, Dr. Roy, I had gone to Gorakhpur. Yes. I was addressing the press. Yes. And the press people asked me a question that one great Congress leader, quote unquote, eminent lawyer had come to Gorakhpur and had described all the ministers of the Modi government as Anguta Chap. I was stunned. I said, sorry, I don't think he would have talked. They said they, he did talk like that. Then I said, if that is the arrogance, they have got Congress party to 44, and if they are determined to make it to 24, I have no problem. Let them <laughs> speak all the little more. Dr. No. Roy, Congress party has won just seven seats in Uttar Pradesh. Yes, yes. Uh, they're in, they're Congress in deep, party. The Congress party is in deep <laughs> danger of extinction, and they, we are discussing that with them, and obviously you are... Uh, and, yet, yet, and yet claiming they have a divine right to rule India. We shall That's stick, problem. for the moment, since your BJP will stick to the BJP, what I meant was, how are you going to yes. change in the sense that there are elements in your party that have divisive tendencies. Divisive in the sense of religious divides, uh, you know, the whole thing, uh, the riots that are instigated, uh, the statements that are made, if you don't really go back to Pakistan. 
is all that going you don't need that anymore you've won you're on top are you going to change that are you going to punish and expel people who say outrageous statements that divide this country out, out, outrageous comments have already been condemned by the leadership and they have Not been always, put in place but okay okay but yes no, no, just a minute just a minute dr roy but let me tell you dr roy the other side of it i would expect an honest analysis as to how our programs for pro poor from beti bachao beti padhao to sukanya samriddhi to digital india to ujwala yojana gas cylinder for the poor did we discriminate in a location of that we did not today the people of uttar pradesh saw that while the other delivery was completely skewed and partisan here was the bjp's program from swachh bharat to whole range of other programs we are being implemented in a completely non partisan manner and dr roy is an it minister there of we run about 250000 digital kiosk common service centers we have 54000 in up delivering digital services i held their conference in kashi and also in meerut about 8 to 9000 young people muslim women other uh, dalit women had come and we could see the sparkle in their faces as to the future which programs like digital india holds for themselves we never discriminated or fasal bima yojana or other yojana therefore i know there is an image problem for us created by some of our friends good luck to them sir but they not, have been doing to us like this since the day we were born sir this is not Dr. just Roy, a, sorry sir just one this second uh, let me correct you is not just an image problem that have done to you in this up election where there are 40 million muslims you did not have one muslim candidate out of 403 now that is a message you're sending it's not somebody trying to do it to you so those sort of divisive uh, strategies are they going to change now because you've done so well you don't need them anymore first of all let me reply to this question of yours please there are two ways of looking at uh, the development of the minorities either you do for tokenism aapne kitna ticket diya mayawati tom toming that i have given 100 other is do real work to ensure their emancipation and development from education to health to delivery to pro poor initiatives which i talked about that's what we are doing and dr roy i am sorry to say we are not a very small party now we are ruling the country and we are ruling more than a dozen states of india and two three more we are going to do right now therefore the benchmark of our performance of non discrimination in governance ought to be seen but it's not so a signal it's not a signal sir yes you're a politician you're a astute politician you've been for many years to give zero candidates is not a signal i think that is difficult to believe and you no no i, I agree I'm, with the I'm rest of what you said please, i agree please, with the please. rest of what you said that no, you no, have I, to uh, deliver just a minute doctor fairly yeah go ahead and doctor dr roy we have been delivering without discrimination that's fine we'll that's fine right. as far as ticket as far ticket party is concerned surely it depends upon a variety of factors i acknowledge muslims have been giving less less vote to us Not but in this elections i think a lot of young people have given a lot of victimized women muslim community on the triple talaq had a very soft corner for us for the stand we have taken mm -hmm. and they kept quiet on this issue i think this is all a, a churning process but since you ask specifically about giving ticket today because you asked me thrice don't forget we met a muslim as the president of india dr apj kalam during our government therefore uh, there are both plus minus plus side and minus side but your larger point is well taken when we talk of sabka saath sabka vikas we should be seen to be yes yes concern about development of all which we are doing our best to do yes that, that the people have that, trusted that that's very good to hear uh ravi shankar ji srinivasan here congratulations to you I just many congratulations. Many congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I just wanted to ask you that, not just now speaking as a BJP politician, but as someone who's a Democrat, you've you know you've been you've fought in the emergency. Does it sometimes concern you that there is the absence of a vibrant opposition in India today? What have we done to face this? <laughs> we have not made any contribution by the way okay be very clear about it i know yes, it's your fault this almost <laughs> i'm just asking whether it's something that concerns i would say you. it just concerns no, him is the best thing he's ever, he's ever like happened to him. 
No, no. What I am telling you, Dr. Roy and Shrinivas, is that we like Congress Party and National Party to be there. But if this Congress Party is determined for Harakiri, we cannot become the saviour. Sorry. And is the Congress Party willing to introspect that even the people of India are not trusting them in Nagar Palikas and municipalities? Forget a state. You know, there has to be a different gravitas while you undertake politics. Right. The kind of language, the kind of abuse of Sharan Narendra Modi. I don't Mr. want to You say that Congress today. Mukt Bharat though. You want a Congress Mukt Bharat. But then on the other hand, you say that the you Congress want, you, Bharat you want a vibrant, uh, you, want a, you want them to do well. When we, when we say Congress Mukt Bharat, we say Congress should be out of power. Congress should remain in opposition for all their commissions and omissions, for right. all their corruption. But the Congress party the nominee, getting reduced Congress to seven seats. Congress has very elections. <laughs> no, no, of course. I'm Arthi, not, I'm Arthi not has a question for you. Is he concerned at the absence of a vibrant opposition? Sir, Arthi has a question opposition. for you. Uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad, heartiest congratulations to you and your party. Thank uh, you, my good friend Arthi. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. <laughs> and I'm sure you're rejoicing today. Um, I, you know, I wanted to ask you, you've been a product of student politics, you've been, you know, an ABVP member. Uh, recently, in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of disturbances on university campuses. And the ABVP has been at the center of all these disturbances. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we've seen violence, we've seen aggressive behavior. Don't you think that this is a cause for worry? And I mean, it's certainly not the kind of student politics that you grew up with. First of all, we are completely against violence. We respect activism of students in the campus. I am myself, I am myself a product of the student movement. I have gone to jail in JP movement. Arthi, you know it very well. I'm, yeah. I'm very proud of that, of fighting as the emergency. Were you a little but violent? what is important is... Were you a little violent when you were young? <laughs> 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 we will talk on Litti. Uh, that is what I am waiting for. Sometimes separately <laughs> when you come to Patna. <laughs> Sorry. But Arthi, on a serious note, this kind of a new uh, combination of separatists and the Maoist who believe in violence, who talk of breaking away from India, who indulge in rampant violence, Bharat ki barbai tak jang chalegi, jang chalegi, is the real problem. And I am sorry, you have got every right for free speech. You can criticize Narendra Modi, you can shower abuses on BJP, but campaigning for disintegration of India is something not acceptable. But you know, that's the was, point. It was established. Therefore, that is also an important component you need to understand. But that. I think in the JNU incident, it was established that none of the student leaders of JNU were involved in shouting those slogans. They were actually shouted by a group of Kashmiris who came in from outside. You and must yet, they. Sorry? And no one knows, who, no no one one knows no who, one who they are. Absolutely. Has, has and yet, yet the attack was on, the, on student leaders. They were charged with sedition, they were thrown into Just jail. I all, and when, when, we saw when a I lot of upheaval. free speech, we, be, we, saw, we completely support free speech. But some of the activists who went to even the Delhi University, their public slogans are in public domain, Arti. Okay? We'll discuss it over a cup of coffee. We haven't had for a long time. Right, but there sir. are many articulations are well known. Neither. And when they say that, have they ever condemned this reckless killing by the Maoist, by the next rights of poor people? Have they talked about the human rights of the um, victims of Naxal violence? No. This selective campaign, freedom of speech, but the right to campaign for disintegration of India is the real issue. That's how I see it. Right, sir. I think uh, never argue about matters of fact. Uh, Arti is saying they never said it, you saying they said it, so over a cup of tea you can sort that out. But thank you very much and many congratulations <laughs> once again. Thank you. And we are going to check your thank student. Thank you, Dr. Roy. Thank you. We are going to check your student record to see uh, how peaceful you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, we take a short break back at 9 o'clock. See you then. 2014 को उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता ने 2017 में दोहरा दिया है और यह संदेश दिया है कि 2017 में भी मोदी जी के साथ हैं और 2019 में भी मोदी जी के साथ रहेंगे यूपी बीजेपी का बीजेपी यूपी की
start to be like this, you don't understand. It's very important. Hello and welcome to our 9 o'clock news viewers. Well, today has seen one of the biggest and most significant elections in decades. You're facing a new India. It's Modi's nation. And it's here to stay for another eight years at least because 2019 looks slam dunk for Mr. Modi and the BJP. It's such an enormous change that the BJP brand now is also subsumed under the Modi brand. In fact, when we traveled around all of us, uh, Uttar Pradesh, people were not voting for the BJP. Everybody said Modi, 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 they were voting for Modi. And with that comes great expectations. So in this transformation, with all these expectations, we're, we're trying to look ahead uh, and assess what's going to happen. How is this country going to change with this dramatic, dramatic election where the BJP has got or Mr. Modi has got 325 out of 403 seats. Let's have a look at some of the data. We did show some of this earlier, but just to reinforce how that this election has in fact been a replica of the 2014 massive Lok Sabha Modi wave. Just a, let's have a look at some of those graphics. Now in 2014, the BJP got 43% in the Modi wave. And this time, 42%. That's hardly any change. It's just about a replica. Uh, if we look at, in fact, the other parties as well, not much change. 30% and then 29%. And then if you look at the BSP, 20% and uh, 23%. In fact, BSP did a bit better, but has done much worse in terms of uh, seats. So. A replica, in fact, a replica is an understatement. This election, the BJP has done better than 2014 because in 2014, the Congress and the Smajwadi Party had actually fought separately. If you add their votes together, this is what the result would have been. Now, in 2014, the BJP actually got 337 uh, seats. Remember that? 307. 37 assembly segments in the Lok Sabha election. If you add, uh, and, and, uh, if you add the SP and Congress together, that 337 would have come down to 310. And this time, they've got 324, a gain of 14 seats. So the BJP has done better, Dorab, than 2014. That's a remarkable achievement. You know, one thing we haven't noticed is the fact that in those three years, almost 5 million new voters have entered. And if you recall, every young voter you met was from Modi. So obviously what they may have lost over lack of governance or whatever is made up by the fact that there's a huge amount of young voters entering the voting universe and that's going to continue happening over the next 10 years. Newer voters are going to come and he's appealing to the younger voters. So one of the other factors, uh, Vasu, that we had mentioned and we showed the data, we won't repeat it again, is that uh, this is an election that has cut through caste and you know we always talk caste, you just tap a person and say what caste do you know who they're going to vote for. This election cut through caste? I wouldn't say that because I think if you look at the manner in which parties allocate seats, it is down to micromanaging caste. So they literally <laughs> have lists which will tell you how many loads, how many kurmis, how many telis, how many kushwas. All parties have done that including the BJP. I think it's a question of how successfully you form a, a social coalition when you, do, when you distribute your seats yeah. and then what is your rhetoric of the campaign and I think the BJP managed to stitch together a successful social coalition of yeah. non-Yadav OBCs, forward castes and non-Jatav Dalits. They fact, of course gained... But that's they gained, a, that is about 90%, uh, sort of 80% of the population. Well, that's... Non-Yadav OBC, non-Jatav SCs and forward castes well, or general castes. That would partly, Pranoy, explain their landslide because I think substantial, we'll have to check the, right. the data, but I think substantial percentages of all these three groups are likely to have voted for them. Shekhar, do you think, uh, I think uh, Yogendra had a good point that the levels may differ a bit, but the change has been uniform. I mean, there's been a huge swing to the BJP since 2012 in all castes. Of course, they'll be different. They'll do a little better in the general caste. They'll do uh, worse in the but Yes and no. I think more no than yes. Because what has the BJP done? Uh, election, particularly in first-past-the-post system, 
is about stitching the right coalition. So BJP has has basically decided to fight, worked on a strategy <laughs> to fight minus the communities and castes who they think will not vote for them, or predominantly will not vote for them. That's Muslims, Yadavs, and Jata Vesis. So they have, in terms of their candidate selection, in terms of their messaging, in terms mm -hmm. of their strategy, they have gone for those communities and castes. So you know, it's, it's, the, it's the sum of so many small castes will always be higher than a dominant powerful caste like Yadavs. And that is what's happening. Uh, Mayavati is today not able to keep all her Dalit votes together as she could in the past or as Kashiram had put together because she's become too much of a Jatav leader. Jatavs have become dominant and BJP played on that. So, right. so caste so got, is uh, there. Mr. Javdekar has just joined us and uh, we can thank you very much sir for joining us and many, many congratulations. Everybody has given us one thing, a big smile when we thank say you. that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One big Thank smile you. needed to, God, to show how happy you are. <laughs> it's a big state <laughs> and a big mandate. <laughs> well said. Okay, sir. So one of the things uh, about demonetization, uh, it obviously was not negative. It might have even been positive, but it certainly wasn't negative. But it's obviously the first step in fighting corruption because these elections itself there was more black money than any other UP election. Are there going to be more steps towards fighting <coughs> corruption than just demonetization? And, and give us one yes. example of what it could be. No. Yeah, I see the Benami Property Act, which was enacted earlier, 30 years ago. The rules were not made and it was not notified. Now we have notified, we have made a new law and we have already Prime Minister is on record that we are going to implement it very strictly and therefore that's second action. But already we have taken action on all the information available on Benami properties stashed away in foreign countries to Lanchester bank accounts and Panama Papers and other things. So whatever has come to the knowledge of government, they are taking action and filing suits and people are paying fines and there are cases. Third, more importantly, it's a series of measures. Demonetization is just one part of the story, one, one mm -hmm. such step. But more uh, steps have already been taken. There was an opportunity given to declare your undisclosed income. So come clean and you will pay only 50% and then you will be, uh, then there will be no uh, right. questions asked as far as undisclosed income, that is tax evasion cases. So that was the issue. Then we have, we have improved tax administration to a great extent and we have brought SIT and as per the SIT recommendations, the steps against black money and we have made, we have plugged the holes uh, in Singapore, in Mauritius, in Cyprus and whatever and we have entered into uh, FATA uh, agreement with uh, the US so you get all the information uh, here, FATCA agreement, and that is also, uh, so there are so many series of stays against black money generation, mm -hmm. black money stashed away, and importantly, tax evasion. Prakashi. Because unless you plug all these three, yeah. you won't be able to generate more funds for real welfare programs. That's the theory. Prakashi. That's the theme. We are very clear that today we get only 5 to 6 lakh crore rupees for welfare, real welfare schemes, we should double that amount. And that will come through taxation, which increase after tax compliance. So digitization. Okay, Prakash so sorry. steps by steps, we are coming to that. Okay, Prakash ji, Srinivasan here, congratulations once again. Uh, thank you for outlining those yeah, steps. Srinivasan. I, yes. I wanted to ask you something which you mentioned earlier today uh, in the show, and, and I wanted to see if we could get a little more out of you. When we asked you about this whole question about yeah. the absence of Muslim representation <coughs> in the candidate selection, you said just wait for the swearing in, there will be something, there will be a surprise. No, not surprise. See, as I said, as I said very uh, from the, in the morning also, 
I was in charge of Manipur and we had seven uh, Christian candidates, three of them are already won and we had three Muslim candidates. Then in uh, Goa, there are, we have ten candidates, ten MLAs, uh, Christian, now five have won again. And in Nagaland, we have six MLAs. So, it depends but, on state on state. But you said, but you so said that there may be something in UP, see, something to look this, forward this, to. Why oh. not? Because our motto is Sabka Saas, Sabka Vikas, not on the basis of caste or religion, but taking all of the society together, we want to take everybody along. And therefore, what is the complaint of Mayavati, surprising, which was not there in the morning. When she raised doubt about EVM, her only proof is that Muslims have voted for BJP, how it can be possible. <laughs> so they are, they are not... They are not living uh, in the mm. present tense and therefore they are, they are surprised to see Muslims also a large, large number voting for BJP. You think they have so voted for the, the BJP? Community, all communities, you yeah, think that they, have. they have. She was saying, okay. so ask her, she has all the details of Boothwise record of where the Muslim dominated areas, BJP has got good amount of votes. That was her uh, uh, essential charge. Prakash ji, this is Aarti Jairith. Heartiest congratulations to you and your party, yes, of Aarti. course. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, just on this question of Muslims, we saw, you know, you do have some people in UP, very prominent leaders of the BJP, who spout a lot of very divisive rhetoric. I mean, to mention Yogi Adityanath, Sakshi Maharaj, they did it during the campaign, they do it even at other points of time. Are we going to see some stricter control on people like this and you know is there going to be some kind of uh, you know some kind of a whip cracked on them um, so that they stop this kind of rhetoric which definitely spooks the minority <coughs> and I think uh, you know widens the <coughs> mistrust between the BJP and the Muslims. Before answering to you specifically just one minute I'll recap the morning story. What is the new story? In 2014, as uh, Pranav was explaining, we got the same votes as 14, but there are two differences. No party gets the same vote as they get in Lok Sabha elections, in Vidhan Sabha election. But this time this has happened, despite three years of our ruling in uh, center, because this has reinforced people's faith in Modi's leadership to deliver, and therefore, they voted with hope in 14. Today they are voting with confidence in uh, 2017. Because now they have realized that this is the good government, uh, governance and yeah. we want this to yeah, happen uh, in our state also. So that's one. Yeah. Uh, to come to come to Jairat's, uh, Arti's question is uh, that uh, our party stand is very clear which is officially given by office and leaders and tell me one example where PM or any of our leaders, senior leader or spokesman have said anything which is not in good taste. So if somebody does such things, media also should concentrate on more official thing, A and two, but it's not media fault. If somebody speaks, I am also journalism, so uh, okay. I'll also pick up that story. Right. The right. issue right. is that is not uh, that that is not an uh, official position and we make it okay. clear whenever it happens. Alright, I, I just want to ask you a question last, uh, before we let you go, I put this to Uma Bharti as well, that you've seen different faces of the BJP. You've seen the, the Atal Advani era, you worked closely with the late Pramod Mahajan and now you're seeing Amit Shah Modi. What is the difference in style between, or just of the BJP between then and now? One big difference. <coughs> There is no, no actual difference. Every election is different, therefore every person's style is different. But let me tell you, the ethos, the positive secularism, the inclusiveness and working for all has been the main theme of BJP all over right, its sir. existence. Right. And particularly after Janta Party Association, when we formed in 80, it right. was much changed uh, Jan Sangha, though the whole narrative changed and we continue with that progressive narrative. We are pro-poor, okay. progressive 
and pro farmers and all uh, pro down to run and under privilege okay, and I therefore modi ji says dalit shoshit pidit vanchit and he says everybody right sir right thank and you very you much okay. Are, okay. So thank you very much javdekar ji thank you and thank congratulations you, congratulations thank once again thank you let's just switch uh, track for a while and look at what happened in punjab and we have uh, pavan bansal with us as well as raghav chadda of the aam aadmi party uh, but before we go to you sir i uh, just wanted to have you to have a look at how the akalis did uh, in they really lost the vote among the sikhs just look at uh, their strike rate in these uh, the sikh vote actually went from the akalis to the aap rather than to the congress uh the sikh vote akalis in the sikh seats the kalis won 13% that strike rate was 13% of the sikhs in hindu seats that means hindu majority seats the kalis win 21% but look at the aam aadmi party sikh seats they won 24% so kalis went right down to 13 in sikh seats and uh, aam aadmi party went up to 24% so they really took the sikh non akali sikh vote uh but it did did uh, mr bansal did it surprise you because whenever we traveled across uh, punjab most people were saying aam aadmi party aam aadmi party but there were obviously quiet congress voters not willing to admit they were voting for congress but many congratulations first it's me Yes Mr Bansal Is it to me? Yeah. Yes sir many congratulations and we just wanted to know Yeah did you expect this or has See, come Thank uh, you very much thank you Yeah, con- yeah. Uh, did you expect this or uh, beyond your expectations Well uh, I mean yes you know one analyst had in fact told me about 8 months before the elections that congress will land up with 77 seats and that's exactly what has happened it the victory of the congress was never in doubt we happened to go to a large number of places in punjab around 20 meetings before the elections and i know everywhere there was an upsurge of support for the congress particularly in the areas which were badly hit by the bjp akali dal regime the industry had come to a standstill we were told that over 18800 and so right. the the industrial units had closed down in one place gobindgarh alone out of 440 megawatts of electricity connection 330 megawatt connection had been surrendered by the people that was the position everywhere i mean and therefore it was extremely clear that uh, because of the havoc that the akali dal and the bjp government had played with the people with the economy of the state the victory of the congress is certain for example just say from 10% and during those 10 years from the gdp from 10% went down to 5% the industrial production the industrial growth from 21% went down to 2% and right. even in agriculture even in agriculture from 4% it did not go down to 1% or so it went down to minus 0.7% that was the position 70% of the youth came in the right. face so, the wrath or they were just taken in by the drug addiction 70% and according to the national crime control right, bureau sir. the rate of the youth who are now drug addicts is 18 times more than the rest of the india okay, that was that- the position that punjab was actually thrust into by the akali dal bjp government and <coughs> this, this result was obvious and when it comes to aap we were sure i had gone around to many places in malwa also sir we could not infer from anywhere that they will get the number of seats that they were okay, talking okay can i of. just right sir if if, if, if i could and just go across to sir victory, if i could just go across to the claims to, of victory have proved to be a bogey only okay blaze of victory proved to be a bogey raghav chadda of uh, the aam aadmi party is with us raghav if you were to identify the one big mistake you made in punjab perhaps goa as well what would that be and because you're an unconventional party we're hoping for an unconventional honest answer <laughs> well quite frankly uh, now that we've lost the election we will go back to the drawing board we will calibrate a new strategy we will introspect and look at as to what were the reasons why we uh, you know did so bad in these elections 
Uh, I don't have uh, Raghav, really that's what everyone right does. now yeah. for you. Let me go back to the drawing board and I will get back. Quite frankly, the outcome of the Punjab elections defies logic. Uh, while conventional political, uh, you know, if you if you look at uh, if you look at it from a conventional political standpoint, uh, you can certainly say that the Aam Aadmi Party, you know, after being labelled as a Delhi party in its first outing in the Punjab state assembly elections, has done well by emerging as a principal opposition. But quite frankly, we are disappointed. We expected the Aam Aadmi Party to do very well. And in fact, your channel and Dr. Roy himself, after traveling extensively in Punjab, uh, predicted that there is 55 to 60 percent probability of the Aam Aadmi Party forming the government. And even the exit polls that, that came out a day before uh, were also pointing in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> but, Can I ask a question? But, but no, but yeah, the, the, the uh, reason Raja, why I brought that up is that it defies logic. And okay, you're were, saying it defies logic. Dorab has a question for you. Go Mr. Ahead, Chadda, you know, you have won 33 segments in the Lok Sabha. You have not even been able to hold those, which is a matter of surprise to many of us. The 33 have come down to 22. What could have been the cause of that? That leave alone not winning, but you are lower than you were. And that that time you were a fledgling party. And yet you got 33 segments. Now you are down to 22. Well, well, as I said, there could be many reasons for this uh, electoral outcome. Uh, certainly, we don't possess the electoral, the well-oiled election machinery that the Congress and the BJP Akali Dal combine have in Punjab. We are expected, uh, though we are a newcomer, we are expected to run the race uh, and challenge the BJP and the Congress, uh, but we do not possess the same amount of resources. Right. Uh, certainly, that could have been one of the reasons. Uh, but as I said, Greater introspection is required. We will do a booth by booth analysis as to what were the reasons why okay. your channel got it wrong, we got it wrong, many exit <laughs> polls got it wrong. But the only consolation no, no. that we have is we didn't that get despite, it wrong. Being labeled, despite being labeled we didn't, a Delhi party, uh, we, we, didn't get it we wrong. are now a principal opposition. We didn't get it wrong. The voters Punjab, were out there. You didn't get them to the, the booth. And the of revolution that we started will continue. All right, Raghav, thanks. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, we just want to also go across as parties who have uh, who've suffered defeat in this election, look at what went wrong. Uh, we also will go back to Uttar Pradesh for just a second to Madhukar Jetli of the Samajwadi Party uh, who has been with us uh, for some time. Thank you, sir, uh, for being on the show and sorry for the wait. Uh, we wanted to ask you, sir, that earlier today, Mr. Jetli, when you were talking to us, you did say that there was a problem with Akhilesh and the manner in which he isolated his father and that was a critical factor in the defeat. Do you, really? you stand by that? If Mr. Jetli is there, I was you told see, he's been... Uh, Shri Nivasan, he's first been of all I want to... I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. But the but the well, the video is not there. Yeah, no, no, we can see you, sir. We you see, can see first you. of all, I want to congratulate all the leaders of the Bharati Janata Party. All the leaders of the Bharati Janata Party, who have worked very hard to see this uh, tremendous victory for their party, and at the okay. same time, I want to also say that the Bharati Janata Party also has a great challenge in the state of UP to find a leader whom they can now present the, as the leader of the legislature party as their chief ministerial face which no, they've sir, been trying to deny for a very long time to not to create any no, controversy no, but not to, but, but not to cut in to just just very quickly what to ask you but time, about the you sapa about, about what, the samajwadi party said in the morning what, do you um, think I that the alliance with the, the congress was a mistake the fact that you are seeing that the vote percentage which you are showing right now is that BJP has won 325 seats right. and the Samajwadi party having won less than that and whatever f f figures you are showing, where has the Muslim vote gone and why has the Muslim not voted the way it used to vote earlier is an answer to your question which you are trying to ask me. Muslims did not vote, probably did not vote in the same number as the other caste vote which you have projected in your graphic in the same number as the Muslims used to vote in the previous elections as they have not voted in, the, in this time. Be they stayed away from voting, it appears, because neither okay. has the right, other sir. party, which is less than us, has won that number of seats, nor have we won those number of oh. seats. So where has the Muslim vote gone? Despite the percentage okay. of poll, that's the, that's vote the question. that you are saying is actually the same. <laughs> All right, Mr. Jetli, 
All right, Mr. Jetley, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. You are right. Those are important questions uh, that you know you will have to look for answers within your party. But uh, also, Pranoy, we can now go across to somebody who's a big, big newsmaker today. He is, in many ways, one of the many men of this election match, and that is Keshav Prasad Maurya. He's the state president uh, of the BJP, led the party, amongst those who led the party to victory. Uh, Maurya ji, thank you very much for being with us. Many congratulations, sir. Many congratulations. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Brilliant, outstanding achievement. Thank you, thank you, sir. You have to be very happy. Keshav ji, what do we want to ask the next Uttar Pradesh to congratulate the next Uttar Pradesh? You are a member of the Bharati Janta Party. से वार्ता कर रहे हैं और प्रदेश अध्यक्ष इस नाते मेरे लिए आज से अधिक खुशी का दिन कोई दूसरा नहीं है जी। क्योंकि आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने माननीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नेतृत्व वाली सरकार के गरीबों के हित में किए गए कामों के बल पर इतिहास में सबसे बड़ी विजय यूपी के अंदर दर्ज की है और मैं अध्यक्ष इस नाते अपने कार्यकर्ताओं की ओर से आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी को भाजपा के सभी कार्यकर्ताओं को उत्तर प्रदेश की महान जनता को सीज झुकाकर प्रणाम करता हूं और उन्हें बधाई देता हूं। तो केशव जी आप इस जो आपकी जो बहुत बड़ी बहुमत जो इस, इस संख्या से जो आप बहुमत में आए हैं आप इसकी क्या मेन वजह मानेंगे क्योंकि ये बात सही है कि पोस्टर में आप भी थे उसमें कलराज मिश्र थे राजनाथ सिंह जी थे अमित शाह थे उमा भारती थी लेकिन पूरा कैंपेन आपने नरेंद्र मोदी जी के बल पे चलाया तो क्या लोगों ने बीजेपी से ज्यादा बीजेपी से ज्यादा नहीं बीजेपी से ज्यादा नरेंद्र मोदी जी के लिए वोट दिया एंड दिस इज ये जी एकदम जीत है एकदम सही बात है उत्तर प्रदेश हो चाहे देश हो आज भी माननीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी के साथ खड़ा है 2014 की विजय को हमने 2017 में दोहराया है और दो में फिर से यूपी में इसी प्रकार से कमल खिलेगा और मेरे मोदी जी फिर से भारत के प्रधानमंत्री बनेंगे आज गरीबों के जीवन में खुशहाली लाने का जो काम भारतीय जनता पार्टी को करना था आज जो यूपी में कमल खिला ये खुशहाली का कमल है ये माननीय मोदी जी की लहर का कमाल है मोदी जी के द्वारा गरीबों के लिए किए गए काम का कमाल है ये नोटबंदी का विरोध करने वालों को जनता ने सजा देने का काम किया है गरीबों के लिए काम करने का भारतीय जनता पार्टी को पुरस्कार मिला है माननीय मोदी जी की हर योजना जी जो गरीब के लिए बनी उस योजना का लाभ भारतीय जनता पार्टी को प्राप्त हुआ है सर जी व्हाट विल बी द फर्स्ट पॉलिसी पहले पॉलिसी कौन सा होगा लोन माफ होगा लोन लोन कर्जा माफ भारतीय जनता पार्टी कर्जा माफ फर्स्ट पॉलिसी भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने अपने लोक कल्याण संकल्प पत्र के माध्यम से किसानों के कर्ज माफी का वादा किया है उसे पूरा करेंगे उत्तर प्रदेश से गुंडा राज को खत्म करने का वादा किया कानून व्यवस्था दुरुस्त करने का वादा उसे ठीक करेंगे महिलाओं के प्रति अपराध को रोकने के लिए हर जिले में तीन महिला पुलिस स्टेशन और तीन महिला बटालियन लाने का काम एंटी रोमियो दल बनाने का काम जो हमने जनता से कहा है उसको भी पूरा करेंगे लोक कल्याण संकल्प पत्र के माध्यम से हमने रोजगार के अधिक से अधिक अवसर पैदा करने की बात कही है भारतीयों से भ्रष्टाचार का खात्मा करने के लिए तृतीय श्रेणी और चौथी श्रेणी से इंटरव्यू खत्म कर बात किए हैं जो भी वादा भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने किया है उसे पूरा किया जाएगा केशव जी आप ऑलरेडी मुख्यमंत्री के तौर पे जिस तरह से आप कह रहे हैं आप लग रहा है कि हम वी आर टॉक आप की बातों से लग रहा है कि आपकी अगले मुख्यमंत्री से ही हम बात कर भारतीय जनता पार्टी के प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से आप बात कर रहे हैं जो मैं आपको बता रहा हूं ये हमारे लोक कल्याण संकल्प पत्र में एक एक लाइन लिखी हुई है जो जनता से वादा भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने किया है अध्यक्ष इस नाते में यूपी की जनता को भारतीय जनता पार्टी का आशीर्वाद उन्होंने दिया है उस वादे पर भाजपा खरा उतरने का काम करेगी और जिन लोगों ने पराजय के बाद जनादेश का आदर न करके ईवीएम मशीन पर सवाल उठाए हैं ऐसे में बहन मायावती जी को और उत्तर प्रदेश के वर्तमान में मुख्यमंत्री अभी कार्यवाहक हैं श्री अखिलेश यादव जी को दोनों लोगों को बस इतना ही कहना चाहूंगा कि जब 2007 में विधानसभा चुनाव हुए मायावती जी को बहुमत मिला तब ईवीएम मशीन सही थी जब 2012 में श्री अखिलेश यादव जी को बहुमत मिला तब ईवीएम मशीन सही थी 
और जब उनको पराजय का स्वाद चखना पड़ा तो ईवीएम मशीन में कमी निकाल रहे हैं अखिलेश जी स्वयं मुख्यमंत्री थे वो अपनी प्रशासनिक क्षमता को स्वयं के स्तर पे उंगली उठाने का काम कर रहे हैं नहीं वो तो, वो बात आपकी सही है एक मैं आपसे सवाल पूछना चाहता हूँ उसके बाद पैनल से और भी सवाल हैं कि जहाँ तक सारे सम, जो सबका साथ सबका विकास की जो बात है कि जो एक तबका है आपके प्रदेश का उनका करीब सोलह प्रतिशत उनकी संख्या है जो जो मुस्लिम तबका है वो इस वक्त देख रहे हैं क्योंकि एक भी उनको टिकट नहीं मिला आपकी सरकार बनी आपको आपको स्वागत है लेकिन वो इस सरकार को देख के उनके जहन में ये सवाल ज़रूर होगा कि अब हमारा क्या होगा किस किस तरह से आप उस तबके को उस समुदाय को रीच आउट करेंगे करेंगे भारतीय जनता पार्टी के लिए सबका साथ सबका विकास ये बात नहीं है ये हमारा काम है हमारे लिए गरीब गरीब एक समान हिंदू हो या मुसलमान हम सपा बसपा कांग्रेस की तरह तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति नहीं करेंगे न्याय सबके साथ होगा तुष्टिकरण किसी का नहीं होगा समाजवादी पार्टी की सरकार में केवल तुष्टिकरण की घटिया राजनीति हो रही थी इसी का जवाब उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता ने दिया है इसलिए कमल खिला है केशव प्रसाद जी बहुत बहुत बधाई हो मैं आरती जयरथ हूँ आप राम मंदिर मूवमेंट में बहुत एक्टिव रहे जी, हैं जी, धन्यवाद और आप राम मंदिर मूवमेंट में बहुत एक्टिव रहे हैं और अभी आपने बहुत सारी बातें दोहराई आपके मैनिफेस्टो से तो आपके मैनिफेस्टो में ये भी वादा है कि राम मंदिर बनेगा अयोध्या में अब आपकी पूरी बहुमत की सरकार है यहाँ दिल्ली में भी और लखनऊ में भी तो कोई टाइमलाइन आप दे सकते हैं कब तक मंदिर बनेगा आप बहुत वरिष्ठ पत्रकार हैं हमने जो लोक कल्याण संकल्प पत्र के माध्यम से वादा किया है यूपी में बीजेपी की सरकार बनेगी तो संवैधानिक दायरे में जो भी काम किया जा सकता है सहयोग किया जा सकता है किए करेंगे अभी मामला सर्वोच्च न्यायालय के समक्ष विचाराधीन है सर्वोच्च न्यायालय के फैसले की भारतीय जनता पार्टी प्रतीक्षा कर रही है और जब फैसला आएगा तो निश्चित तौर से रामलला का मंदिर बनेगा और हमने जो लोक कल्याण संकल्प पत्र के माध्यम से बात कहनी थी वो हमने कहा है यह विषय कहीं से ऐसा नहीं है आज हमारे ध्यान में केवल उत्तर प्रदेश का विकास है उत्तर प्रदेश में सुशासन है उत्तर प्रदेश से भ्रष्टाचार को खत्म करना है रोजगार के अधिक से अधिक अवसर पैदा करना है सबका साथ सबका विकास भारतीय जनता पार्टी का नारा है और सपा बसपा कांग्रेस का कुछ का साथ कुछ का विकास कुछ का भला करने का उनका प्रयास रहा है उसको जनता ने नकारा है साहब आपका कैबिनेट में आ, मुस्लिम मेंबर होगा जी आप प्रतीक्षा करिए अभी केंद्रीय संसदीय बोर्ड का हमारे निर्णय होना है सरकार बनेगी तो क्या होना है कैसे होना है ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी तय करेगी क्योंकि आप कह रहे हैं पर जो भी उचित होगा वो जरूर तय किया जाएगा क्योंकि आप कह रहे हैं सबके साथ तो इसलिए मैं पूछ रहा हूँ सबके साथ सबके विकास का मतलब ये नहीं होता कि केवल टिकट दे दिए और मंत्री बना दिए सबके साथ सबके विकास का मतलब यह होता है किसी के साथ हम भाजपा की सरकार हो तो किसी के साथ अन्याय न हो सरकार की योजना बिना भेदभाव के जिनको मिलना चाहिए उनको मिले सरकार का दायित्व तो होता है कि वह उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर कानून व्यवस्था को कायम रखे जाति धर्म दल और पद के आधार पर कार्रवाई करने की जगह अपराध को देख करके कार्रवाई करे लेकिन आपका सिग्नल था कि यूपी कैंडिडेट में एक भी मुस्लिम नहीं था चार करोड़ चार करोड़ फोर्टी मिलियन मुस्लिम्स है आपके स्टेट में एक भी विनेबल मुस्लिम नहीं मिल सकते वो उस आप सिग्नल दे रहे थे क्या नहीं दिए हाँ हमारे यहाँ कोई जीतने वाला था नहीं दिए हम नंबर गिनाने के लिए नहीं देते हम किसी को खुश करने के लिए नहीं देते हम तुष्टिकरण नहीं करते अगर हम हमारे पास जीतने वाला कैंडिडेट होगा तो जरूर देंगे नहीं होगा तो भविष्य में भी नहीं देंगे लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि उत्तर प्रदेश में निवास करने वाले किसी नागरिक के साथ अन्याय होगा सबके साथ न्याय होगा सबका विकास होगा केशव जी एक आखिरी सवाल है कि जो एंटी रोमियो स्कॉड्स की आपने बात की वो किस तरह से आप उनकी स्थापना करेंगे कैसे चलेंगी एंटी रोमियो स्कॉड्स वो तो बताया हुआ है उत्तर प्रदेश में जो माताओं बहनों के प्रति बेटियों के प्रति जो अपराध की बाढ़ है समाजवादी पार्टी की सरकार में जो महिलाओं के प्रति अपराध करने वाले थे उनको सरकार ने संरक्षण देने का काम किया महिलाओं के साथ रेप के आरोप भी लगे और यूपी की सरकार ने उनके मुकदमे तक नहीं लिखे 
लोगों को सर्वोच्च न्यायालय में जाकर के मुकदमा लिखाने का आदेश कराना पड़ा तो भाजपा की सरकार में थाने में अगर कोई गरीब जाए कोई किसान जाए कोई मजदूर जाए कोई नौजवान जाए कोई माता जाए यूपी के अंदर भाजपा की सरकार आने का मतलब है थाने में अगर कोई शिकायत लेकर के जाएगा तो शिकायत दर्ज होगी उस पर जांच करके कार्रवाई भी होगी एंटी रोमियो दल महिलाओं के अपराध को सख्ती के साथ रोकने के लिए कौन के नहीं कौन जो कौन एक्चुअली होंगे जल्दी जानकारी मिलेगी सरकार गठित होने दीजिए ये फोर्स के ही लोग होंगे जिनको महिलाओं के प्रति ये फोर्स बड़ी सक्षम है यूपी की उस फोर्स को कमजोर बनाने का काम सपा बसपा की सरकार में हुआ उन अच्छा। लोगों ने पुलिस का फोर्स का प्रशासन का भी राजनीतिकरण करने का काम किया भाजपा की सरकार में अपराध रोकने के लिए हर वह जरूरी कदम उठाए जाएंगे जिससे उत्तर प्रदेश में कानून व्यवस्था का सही एहसास उत्तर प्रदेश की जनता को हो भय मुक्त उत्तर प्रदेश हो विकास से युक्त उत्तर प्रदेश हो थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू वेरी मच वी होप विकास होगा यूपी में और सबके साथ थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मैनी कंग्रेचुलेशन कंग्रेचुलेशन थैंक यू सो इट्स वी गॉट नरेश गुजराल विथ आस वी कैन स्विच टू पंजाब फॉर अ वाइल I know you, Shaker. You've got a lot of questions on Punjab, but Nareesh ji, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Been a tough day, right? What happened? Yes, I heard you. Okay. Sorry, Nareesh Kujral. Thanks very much for joining us. Can you hear me? I think uh, we have to get the audio fixed. Yeah, yeah, we'll just get that fixed in a minute. So it's a, it's a pretty tough, determined. I think the important point he made was that we haven't given Muslim, fielded Muslim candidates now because we didn't have any winnable candidates, and if we don't have in, have them in future, we'll not field them in future as well. We will not do this for appeasement. I right. think this is a very clear statement. Right. But this wasn't always the case with yeah. the BJP. This True. argument that is now being made. that we don't feel muslim candidates because muslims didn't vote for us that wasn't the case no earlier. they don't say that huh? they say because we can't find a winnable candidate no but they also say ki why should we give tickets to those communities who don't vote for us some Did of them do that? say that no, 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 he may not no, he may not have said that no, but no, i've heard no, no, no he may not, not have said that but i've heard well, other Chandan, bjp leaders say that i haven't heard any no. bjp leader say that on the record yeah. okay no, i've had a, i've had a bjp mp in gonda brijbhushan sharan singh telling me that on the record But I, I was saying that there is an earlier BJP. He the usually Vajpayee, has one foot in jail. Well, <laughs> yeah. this time both feet were on the ground. The Vajpayee BJP was was a different BJP. No, the, on this the, matter, no. The Muslims were sought, their votes were sought, and were often received as well. No, true, but nevertheless, BJP never gave Muslim candidates, and the few occasions that they did, they performed very poorly. No, so that I mean, not always Sikandar Bakht in the past. Shanawas, Shanawas, Shanawas was there in Bihar. And even actually Mukhtar Abbas Nagvi did, Mukhtar 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 did well. win from Rampur once. Yes, but it is, these are very rare instances. But uh, Chandra Mitra, is this going to change? I think with this huge victory, is there going to be a change, a reaching out? Because this is a glaring gap in the BJP. No, I agree with you. I agree with you that there is a gap, and this gap has to be filled. Because they Now, started fielding uh, Christians hmm. in Goa. If yeah, if you had more Christians but elected in Goa than Congress party, small, small electorates, small constituencies. so it's uh, you know winability uh, is that much easier in goa but i think uh, pranoy what bjp will need to look at is not kind of <coughs> just giving tickets because it may be difficult right. for bjp to get muslim candidates to win mla or mp seats but where the muslims have to be uh, kind of included in a very proactive way will be through the um, ml through mlc through various rajya sabha through various uh, committees and uh, government bodies so that they feel that there has been an inclusiveness i think that has to be done no, community there right, is 20% yeah. of the population you give them three ministries let's assume that you are in that committee how disenfranchised would you feel they look at parliament today the proportion of muslim parliament in 1952 which is now has been going down consistently wherever you look is going down now if you belong to that community i am not saying give us representation the parsi but, but i'm saying <laughs> give them representation please that's what this is all about but, but this is what is all about <laughs> <laughs> why why single out the bjp 
No, all no. parties, I'm saying, you know, all parties. So they are feeling disenfranchised. Is that a good thing for the country? No, it's not uh, good at all. It has Sandeep, been rectified. We, uh, you, do you suffer from exactly the opposite? Appeasement, overdoing it, vote, uh, vote bank politics. Do you need to correct that as well? I think we suffer from uh, some people who don't understand the difference between inclusive politics and uh, you know this kind of a demonstrative uh, appeasement. politics of appeasement. I, mean, what, I won't call it appeasement. But I don't think what, what, appeasement happens to, what happens to a party's idea of secularism when someone like Digvijay Dig Singh jumps up any time there's an encounter, even under yes, your own yes, government, where your, yeah. when your own police officer is killed in Bartla House. Absolutely. If that wasn't no, a genuine uh, encounter, I, I'm so the one. telling you, that is what I said, when I said some people's ideas. See, for example, I'll tell you. I so was, that's whom I, you meant by some and people. And let me say how we make an issue out of a non-issue. I was voted in, uh, Bartla House falls in my constituency. Elections were held exactly six months after uh, this incident. You know, uh, Okra is divided into two sections, all the Muslim things. Yeah. By the time we had finished the counting of the Muslim votes, total votes polled were 38,700. I led by 38,300. Only 400 votes out of 40,000 had gone to somebody else. And so it, it was a non-issue, but Lahore's firing, and we made an issue of that. Obviously, somebody will say you are appeasing. While the majority party was not, there were free elements who got us into a lot of trouble. And be, let's be very clear about that. So I'm saying we didn't follow a policy of appeasement, but there were people doing that. Your party and that gave, was the problem. Your party gave Ashok Chakra to the police officer who died, and then the party raised questions yeah, about that. Yes, absolutely. 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 I mean, absolutely. you have to be you have to be a human bomb. Absolutely. You you are very correct. Well, the reason I laid with, waste with, 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 for then with, four and a half years, I actually faced with, questions with, with, with a loose in, in Butler House because of that. Sorry, so, Sandeep ji, some people in your party. Are loose cannons in this matter? Oh, they are there everywhere. Some people, yeah, yeah, but, but, <laughs> but very, very senior important people, senior, leaders. senior leaders. But so is Arjun Singh. Let me name him. Divijay Singh. Has but I must say that when we interview and Yogi Adityanath has calmed down a bit in this election. He was very careful. Yeah, very careful. No, he was very careful. Actually, it's I met him and he was very careful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a change. Is that a signal that uh, of the way BJP may move? You know, I think BJP has been careful. Um, while maintaining its distinct identity, in this election at least, the BJP campaign was not in any way communal. I don't think there was any attempt to not, polarize. Not entirely, Chandan. No, no. See, there, were, there were remarks repeatedly made to suggest that development vikas by the Samajwadi Party government is based on communally divisive grounds without necessarily supplying the proof to black that claim. Amit Shah repeatedly went on saying laptops are distributed on the basis of caste and religion again and again in, in rally after rally. There's simply no proof of this. No, and even that electricity not given on uh, given uh, on, no, e, not no, given no. on e, fact, all the fact uh, checking showed there was equal on both. Uh, I'd just like to add. And even this, uh, Congress, uh, Samajwadi yes. Party, Bahujan 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 Party, that's all right. That's that's no 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 that's not fair. That's not fair. No, anyway, we're looking no ahead now. We're looking I mean, ahead, and you say no, Yogi Adityanath's calming down could be a signal of things that are changing. I think so. I think you see now that they have won uh, this kind of majority, mm -hmm. and there was a feeling uh, from about week, ten days back, that they were coming into power and coming into power with a good majority. Right. BJP has to maintain peace. Right. But and no, now you have to. Let's have just go. We've got Naresh Kujral now. He actually can hear us. Okay. So no, I was going to say that, you know, I think other parties must also look at the way they do their politics. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mayavati was very clearly appealing to Muslim votes, made it very clear, yes. you know, that she was seeking Muslim votes. Yeah. The Samajwadi Congress tie-up was based on getting a consolidation of the Muslim, Muslim vote. votes. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the, this whole rhetoric of secularism, which has yeah. come to mean appeasement, the way the yeah. Congress has practiced it. So there's going to be a so backlash against that as well. There has to be. I mean, even if the BJP doesn't try well, to do it, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is going Let's to be there. Let's bring in Naresh so. Kujral uh, for Punjab. An amazing election. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Bottom line, what happened? What's your analysis? Well, the people of Punjab have given a very clear verdict and we accept it with all humility. Why? Why After was the 10 verdict? years yeah. of rule, there has to be some anti-incumbency. Right. But I must point out that in the run-up to the elections for the last one year or so, absolutely vicious, baseless allegations were made against a section of our leadership, both by the Aam Army Party and the Congress Party. And 
a section of the media supported them. <clears throat> that has stuck. And the verdict is before us. As I said, I'm glad the people of Punjab have given a clear mandate so that the business of governance can continue. I congratulate the Congress party and uh, Mr. Amrinder Singh. But at the same time, I must say one thing, that if you look at the percentage of votes polled, then that tells a little different story. We may have got only 18 seats, though the exit polls were giving us 5 to 7, but we still retain 31% of the vote share, as against 38% for the Congress. Together. So I am sure we will, we, we will introspect, we will regroup, and we will continue to fight the battle. Narish Kujral, just looking ahead a bit, uh, generally in Punjab, it's historically been revolving door except for the last election. And when there's a revolving door, one party going out, the other one comes in, there's a vindictiveness. There's cases filed against the previous government. Is that going to happen again? Because that gets pretty nasty. Pranoy, last 10 years, did we file even one case against any Congress leader? I wouldn't be surprised. I hope this is, we've, I hope this is the past. No, they haven't. I hope Congress yeah. doesn't come back to it. But, but <coughs> there has been no scandal. There has been no scam in 10 years of our rule. So they are welcome to do whatever no, they wish. One of the things which uh, a lot of people talk about Sukhbir Badal is that he's a very competent, intelligent and uh, uh, good administrator. But he's, he ruins his own case by getting involved in so many different businesses. He runs buses, he has hotels. If, if you're incompetent, you do all that. But if you're competent and you want to be a politician that makes a change to the state, why do you divert your attention to business? Cable, cable systems, buses, I mean... Look, Pranoyo, are you yeah. suggesting that somebody who comes to politics should give up all businesses? Yes, like Trump. <laughs> and then what do, what do you do? How do you, how do you support your family? You divest the businesses, you sell the businesses. I business, mean, they, all the businesses make money. There's a conflict. The bus service was started by the family in the 40s. So, so sell it now. You should sell it a long time ago in Mr. But Badal's time. The, the hotel cable, business he started the cable system 15 years ago. The cable system is only 5 or 7 years old. The ho hotels are not 40 years old. It's just that for his own interest. System, I'm just saying for his own interest. one share in the cable business. This is all made up by the media. Oh. The media right. that's controlled by the Akalis. <laughs> no, not at all. He, what? he controls He controls one channel. What is wrong with that? Pranoy controls the channel. No, uh, but I'm not a politician, thank God. Okay. No, but Roy thank doesn't... Thank you, Nahamadvi party here. Do you agree with... Uh, w w what's your reaction to Naresh Gujarat's statement? <laughs> well, quite frankly, uh, the Akali Dal BJP combined were perhaps the most hated regime that we've seen in the history of independent India. And the My people God. have voted them out. That's the results bit, are clear. That, that's a bit... You guys haven't Congress. seen very you much. Yeah. To <laughs> right. You haven't, you haven't well, seen, haven't well, seen. well, you have extensively traveled in haven't Punjab, Dr. Haven't Roy, and I'm sure your analysis <laughs> coincides with mine no, that the Akali Dal and the BJP combined had huge anti incumbency Yeah, but I wouldn't the say the most hated in. Uh, you see, there's a bit of a problem with the Aam Aadmi Party over the top. Uh, of course, there was anti incumbency, but to call it the most hated regime since independence India, that's, that's where. You know. It's just, you know, just, just to, well, that just is to, just to add a fact. That is the sense that I got. Just, yeah. just to add a fact. That is the I, sense that I got. Yeah, that is yeah. the exact sense well, that I got. And that is what various people. We got eight percent more votes than them. Punjab politics were quite Can I just add a fact here? But, but be the facts. Facts is the man. May I just complete? The man most demonized by Amadmi Party, and by Congress, and by popular culture, film industry, Urta Punjab. The man called the kingpin of drug business in Punjab, Majeed who is. frankly, if you know him, is a fairly decent guy, a regular uh, Maja Sardar, right? But nothing to, nothing to implicate him in any drug business except rumors. That man has won by 23,000 votes. And, I, and the Aam point Aam is, Aam 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 the important point is that 
it's all based on rumors and nothing actually there's Absolutely. no conviction it, and because, it's just because because he, he's, may I also, respond to that? he's also filed defamation may cases against many people including uh, amadi party's pre president raghav chadda wants to come in yes go ahead sir may i just respond yes, to that yes go ahead go ahead well if you look at the ed well, if you look at the proceedings of the enforcement directorate there are people like jagdish bhola ssp salvinder and others who have on record given statements that the kingpin of the drug mafia in punjab is bikramjit majithia it is not the aam aadmi party or any other political party that has accused mr majithia of uh, running the drug menace of punjab but one by he is one by 23000 votes before the indian authorities when the investigations yes i can see I mean, that he has that, won and that is the unfortunate reality of indian democracy and indian politics but just because he has won an electoral battle does not mean that he has not been indulging in all these malpractices or or been running the drug mafia let the authorities decide Nareesh and Kujal, if, your if you were to give hand out clean cheats on the basis of i'm not handing out a clean cheat i'm not handing out a clean cheat raja bhai has won six times raja bhai has won six times from gunda and mukhtar ansari is not a indication of उटलमैन He has never said it in court. He only gave passing to passing to the court. He gave a bite to one of the news channels, but he has, when he entered the court, he did not say so. And nowhere in the records is Mr. Majitha's name mentioned. It is true. Okay, thank you very much. This will Naresh never be Kujar, sorry. Uh, Arti has a question. Yeah, N uh, Naresh Kujar. You must be very happy that the Congress has won in uh, Punjab instead of the Aam Aadmi Party because Aam Aadmi Party was threatening to send all your leaders to jail. <laughs> so are you? Well, I am very happy for Punjab that the people of Punjab have given a decisive mandate so that governors can continue and and a and a, a party which is completely destructive. which was joining up with extremist forces has been shown yeah. the door yes. okay everybody thank you very much we are run out of time yeah, people are shouting in my ear and uh, sandeep thank you very much for coming in here chandan uh, both of you i think have been outstanding and it made things much more uh, clearer I'm in our party. minds i don't know whether you'll come back sorry i have been outstanding, outstanding in my party, party. <laughs> standing out standing out standing out standing out and arti god bless you uh, put both of them in kept them in check <laughs> thank you very much and i hope i looked intellectual enough <laughs> uh, thank you all very much for joining us been a fascinating day of election and a huge huge change in indian politics thanks for watching bye, -bye.